He's trying to bite him in the butt. You two are silly. Yada. He's trying to bite you. <laughs> You better keep your butt over here. Sherman's going to get you on this side. You guys going to play? Maybe. So this is Yada. He is the only horse that I've ever raised from a baby. Um, he was born in the rescue. We rescued his mom. Um, she was getting ready to be shipped to Mexico for slaughter. So she was really sick. We rescued her. And there was rumored that she was with Full. Um, so we actually took her to the vet and she was so sick the vet asked us not to unload her and said it was doubtful that, ow! What are you doing? That she, uh, that the foal would make it. Um, so she recovered. We use lots and lots and lots of um, essential oils, topically and or orally for her. We use Young Living. And um, I guess he's not going to show his head and face anymore. Anyways, so then he was born about about three months, three or four months later. So he is a spotted saddle horse. He's naturally gated and I would say um, he's been gentled. We've had him under saddle, but I'd say he's, you know, he's still green. This is Ace. We talked about him before. Jess is all relaxed down here because her baby Daisy. Hi Daisy. Is nice and safe and nobody's trying to get at, at her. Jess, can you finally relax? Misty's over there. Thank you. In Wellington. Hi, Welly. Hello. And of course, the talk show host, Sherman. Hi, Shermie. How are you? Are you having a good day today? Huh? If I talk to you, I'm going to have to turn the camera around. What do you think? Hmm? It's like, why aren't you close to me? And we've got sugar down here in Yada's stall. He's dug a hole. I don't know. Some of you may know that we don't have all of our stone or our flooring. Really? Welling? Um, we do have the metal off to this point. Um, the metal is going to finish coming off. We have to finish the stalls on that side. Put a couple more boards up on these stalls to make them higher. I just made you guys dizzy. Um, and then that other barn will be open to the indoor. We'll make that an arena. And here's Willie. And he's, um, this is normally sugar stall. You got little dirt clods all over Willie. Hi, friends. Hi, baby. What you doing? You want some loving? Hmm? When Willie came into rescue, he came into Heart of Phoenix. You got a big knot in your mane we're gonna have to work on. 
and um, he was really abused. His nose was broken open. It was really sad, and the people were basically scared of him. So we can't put Willie in his stall because all of the rain came in before we had the gutters on. And as you can see, if you guys have animals, look at this mess. It's drying up a little bit. It's been super duper windy. Um, but our whole middle of the aisle way, the rain came in and it has not dried. So we need to get some more stone, but we need to get some more funds to be able to do that. Um, we donate all of our um, extra money. And plus I work so we can support the horses because the donations just um, seem to go to the big rescues. Hi, Welly that are, you know, actively doing the, um, you know, urgent posts for, you know, horse, horse will go to slaughter if you don't, you know, donate kind of thing. And some of those rescues are just um, bringing in millions and millions of dollars. And um, I would be the last person to say to put a horse down, but, um, Here's, here's something well the all right I'll be closer I'll get closer I'll come stand by you okay there um, we'll watch these guys is that what happens um, what happens once those horses are bailed um, a lot of them are you know kill buyer um, type holding pens that they're getting most of the money but have you ever thought what happens to those horses? Because once, welly, welly, once the posts are done, once the horse is saved, then they're on to another one. It's like they have to keep that money machine of urgent intakes, horses going to slaughter. They just continue to, you know, pull on everybody's heartstrings because nobody wants to see that happen. But what about, what about this? Here's the problem. Some of those rescues, look at their rates of euthanasia. They pull the horses to get the donations and then they don't care for the horses. Or I, I won't say all the horses they don't care for, but they have an extremely high rate of euthanasia. Some places say that they are a no-kill facility because they don't euthanize the horses there, they send them out or they send them somewhere else and then that's where they're euthanized. So rescues and sanctuaries like ours that keep these horses and are dedicated to giving them a better life just don't seem to get the donations because the horses appear safe, right? They're out of immediate danger, but they've all come from rescue situations. Every single one of them here. Uh, Willie was, we collaborated with Heart of Phoenix. They rescued him and we got him from there. Sugar was headed um, from, or to Bastrop. Um, headed to New Mexico. Sherman was bounced and bounced, retired from a carriage service. He was a driving horse. And he went through several hands, several rescues. Yada, I just talked about. Ace was abandoned in a field with several other horses. He was, he was adopted. I'm gonna let Welly out. Against my better judgment. Um, maybe I'll leave him in. I need to tell him. Well, I'm gonna break my gate. Now stop. Draft horses are hard right on here. Alright, back up, Ollie. Back up, buddy. No, not in the corner of the gate. There you go. Um, Welly was an owner surrender. 
Oh, fudge monkey. Nope, 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 no. Oh, it's empty, all right. He's learned this trick that he can come eat everybody's feed, but they're all empty. Let me make sure Mikey's is empty. Yep, okay. Um, but anyways, so that's the problem, is that once they're rescued, you know, they don't all go to, um, you know, single horse families or double horse families that they live happily ever after, especially the ones that are um, just really aren't physically able to ride on trails or be a pleasure horse or 4-H horse. Um, so Ace, yeah, Ace was adopted out. So he came to us um, when he was abandoned in the field. Then he was adopted out once and his owner or his adopter had some problems with her back so he came to us. Then he was adopted out again and not taken care of so we um, went and took him back. Um, see what one of them did to our new board? Lovely. Um, so he's back. And he was pretty shut down for quite a while after he came back. But he's, he's, he's good now. Um, Daisy. I'm not sure her complete background, um, but her owners just couldn't take care of her. Her and uh, Misty needed to stay together, so we said we would take them. And then just same thing, she came from an auction um, somebody bought her from a horse trader and um, kind of misrepresented her a little bit. She's got a lovely gait and she's very uh, marish, but um, she's a nice riding horse, but you, you have to know what you're doing when you ride her. And she's older, right? So... Um, so she's here. And then we've got Boone in the other room who came from Heart of Phoenix. We've got Cherokee who we rescued from another rescue. And um, in a roundabout way, we there were some falsified papers, so we were actually able to find his original owner. Or I guess that was Red, Red Lady, who was at the same barn as Cherokee. Um, and... I guess that's about it. Mikey, who was, um, he was saved from a group who um, just focuses on, on any BLM branded Mustang. I don't know if you can even see where his brand was right here on his neck. It's just so very faint. Right there. Hi, Mike. Um... But we told them that we could, we could transport for them because we were transporting for Fleet of Angels. Um, but we couldn't keep him. And that was, oh my gosh, I don't know how many years ago. He was adopted out. And if you'll see him on some of our other videos, um, he was probably just days from dying. Um, they just really did not have the knowledge on how to take care of a senior horse. Um, he doesn't really have any teeth. And I also think um, the, the person that wanted him as their horse that adopted him was trusting other people to feed him and that's just a recipe for disaster. Um, when you adopt a horse from us, you do have to send us pictures, updates, and during all the shutdowns, um, of the COVID stuff, they had stopped sending us pictures. So we took a trip down to Tennessee and were pretty much horrified with, with what we saw and we brought Mikey back. Um, so it's kind of just a little walkabout in the barn. Some other stories. So they've all been out all over the property today. Most of them out by the pond or the front where it's not muddy. Um, so we bring them in, we give them, some of them get, you know, more than others, just depending on their needs. So tonight they got some tribute, 
Um, some of them got hay cubes, soaked hay cubes. They got a little bit of black sunflower seeds. And then we give them their big sky mineral. And so now they just kind of like to, well, these two are playing still. But some of them just like to come chill for a little bit before we let them back out. Looks like Sherman's trying to take a nap. As well as uh, Sugar. She hears me talking though. Willie's standing in the corner taking a nap. And there's Will. What you doing, Will? Did you get more mineral? Oh. Ace loves to be able to scratch his ear with the broom or with the handle of the rake. I was just kind of going through and telling them a little bit about everybody's story, why they were here. Didn't tell what, about my story, did what, you? What you fed them. No, but I should tell them that Will rescued me from the shelter. Did it, did we tell you that story yet, guys? Um, so I was, in, I was a humane agent for our county. And that's how we met. So it's kind of funny because I tell everybody that he adopted me from the shelter. Aren't these guys lovely though? I mean, it's just so hard to think that every single one of these horses, every single one, could not be here because they're all somebody's throwaways. So in our program that we're starting, it is a therapeutic horsemanship program. So we teach about, um, everything horses, right? There's so many things that you can do with horses that are ground-based that aren't necessarily under saddle. Now, I'm not saying that none of these horses get ridden because I do ride some of them, um, but there's so much value in learning about the horse, about behavior, about horses in a herd, about the energy of the horse, about communication with the horse. Um, just so many things, um, you know, just true healing with the horses. So even though some other people might not think that these horses are quote, like usable, or they have no purpose, um, that will be their job. So I don't know if I've ever asked for donations here on YouTube but I will put a link if any of you, um, I know Dixie is so very, very faithful. Thank you so much, um, so, so much. She does a, a monthly donation and every, you know, dollar, $5, $10, $1,000, what, whatever it is, um, we try to be very prudent. Um, we don't take any of that money for ourselves. In fact, we, we contribute probably, some months it's more, but right around $2,000 a month in feed, hay, mineral. Um, they do need their hooves trimmed coming up, and that is gonna be um, probably around $600 to do the whole barn. So if any of you feel led to contribute to that, that actually would be amazing. Um, I'm trying to put in some extra hours at work, honestly, to, um, to set some aside each week. Um, and thank goodness that um, Will had a great job and has a, has a good retirement plan, but yeah, so if you anybody feels inclined to donate towards hoof trims or feed or anything specific, we will honor your requests for where that needs to go. 
and we would really, really, really appreciate it. Um, if anybody has a background in grant writing, that would be amazing because we need some help on that as well. But guys, just like look at this whole edition. Um, it's just so amazing. Just so amazing. This was, you know, a couple years in the making, planning, more than that <laughs> in planning and training. Um, and then, like I said, so this loft will come out that you see up here and all that stuff. And then the rest of that barn will be cleared out. The, he's only got, oh, like three more panels of metal? Six. Six more panels, okay. And then that will be down and open to the other side of the barn. Once all the metal's off, then they'll start tearing out the loft. But it got cold again, which is not very pleasant to, is he in there standing by her again, Wally? No, he's outside. Oh, who's that's that? Red. Oh, that's red. She's dark. She looks dark. She's waiting for me to open up Boo's gate so she can help him eat. Okay. So we have three horses in there. It's Cherokee, Boone, and Red Lady. And then the chickens. We have to find a find a spot for the chickens. We're gonna they're gonna get evicted. They've been paying their rent pretty good, but they're gonna get evicted. <laughs> but Mikey's looking pretty good. The last they said he was, last year they said he was at least 35. Um, you can't, yes you, Mikey. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? He has been playing and play fighting and running and carrying on with several of the other horses. So that tells me, you know, he's just really feeling good. I'm gonna walk over here so you can see him a little bit better. Um, but he's not, he's not a very big guy. Those two are just still carrying on, Ace and Yada. Um, He's, he's pretty good. I mean, we've had him now. He's been back with us for two years. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera here so you guys can see what's going on over here. Shenanigans, teenager shenanigans. Although Ace is quite a bit older than Yada. He don't like it though. Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> Sherman's like, would you guys be quiet? I'm trying to catch some Zs. walk over here sometimes if they see me they get distracted and stop but thank you to all of our subscribers um, We've lost a few because last year we didn't post much um, through the spring and then all the summer. The summer we were doing this, which we could have shown you, you know, some of the construction. I probably have some pictures, so maybe I'll put together a little video or reel about it. Um, but we actually lost two horses last year and it really took the wind out of my sails, especially Will's too, but I just, I wasn't ready to tell their stories. I actually don't even know if I can talk about it right now. So I'm going to just put a hold on that and we'll talk about it later. Um, I can't talk about it yeah, we can't talk about it either. The one, um, they were both very, very, very special. One was Annie, who you've seen in some of our other videos, the Curly Baxter that had Baxter. Baxter, how do you pronounce that? Anybody help me out on that? She's a curly horse, which meant that she was hypoallergenic and really didn't have any mane or tail. Um, not much hair. And then in the winter when her coat grew out, it was very curly. Her ears were a little curly. Um, she was a dressage horse at one time. And then the other horse was Addie, who was my absolute heart horse that we bit against the kill buyers because um, she had basically was insulin resistant. She was fat, she couldn't walk. Um, we um, 
found some specialty trimmers and they helped her. Uh, she wore styrofoam shoes for probably about six months and then she wore boots. Um, but yeah, you'll see her on some of my pictures. She was the grayish, bluey. Sometimes she was blue uh, when she got hot, but um, she was white. She was gray, but she was older, so she had turned white. Um, yeah, I, that's really all I can say about it right now. I can't really talk about it anymore. But these guys help. And we all have loss. It's a part of life. Sometimes, you know, it puts things into perspective. But, all right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Do you think there's anything you want to talk about, Will? No, he's ready for spring. Ready for spring and no mud. Watch out, Yana, he's going to get your butt. Oh, hey. Sherman. Stop They're that. playing. That's not very nice. Stop it. Hey. Is that necessary? Play with me. He's not hurting you. He's not hurting you. <laughs> he doesn't look too happy about it. <laughs> sure, me. Nice. He just can't stand it. <laughs> Look how sleepy he is. Did you have a rough day, Sherman? Hmm? I'm making those little nose wiggle, honey. Jeremy. Why'd they say he's a punch? Probably Belgian mix? Suffolk punch? No. I think he's, I think he's crossed with something smaller than a punch, because he's a little undersized for a full-blown punch. Yeah. He's just very excited. Why are you pawing it? You're gonna ruin another stall. This time. Oh, they're play biting through the fence. <laughs> Is that safer? Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to go in and get my kit, and I'll talk to you later.